as the hand of God. If you think about an industry, let's say weddings, mm. there there is the person called the planner. Yes, the wedding planner. Exactly. So the producer is basically the planner. Exactly. Who is also the head of execution. Yes. And their job is to build out an execution team, right? Yes. To find yes. all the right suppliers. Yeah. To contract mm -hmm. and to deliver the, concepts. The concept, yeah. To the public. The exactly. Fans. Yeah. Right. A good budget, mm. in my view, mm. has a list of all your expenditure, mm. including tax, which is mandatory. Mm -hmm. Tax is mandatory, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you have all your expenditure. Yeah. Then you have another list that is uh, your second sheet, which is listing all your income, yeah. all your income centers. Mm -hmm. So guaranteed and potential. Yeah. And then you have a third sheet, which mm. is the cash flow. Yes. Right? Yes, yes. Because you have to pay vendors yes you have to pay artists you're going you're going to pay deposits there's a system yeah. of staggering payments yeah i found that one of the places where people really blunder mm. is this cash flow oh yeah definitely <laughs> I think I would like to talk a little bit more on mm. ticketing because I feel like this is mm. another one where everybody just, <laughs> mm. this is, I've been around this conversation. Yes. Like, you guys, this artist is, this guy is like a hundred G's guy. If we just have like 3,000 guys, if you just judge each Ah, guy, yeah, 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 and they're like a thousand. Let me tell you something. <laughs> that is how, that is how, that's how you fall into the rabbit hole. That's how, eh, you know, you're asking about the why. That's how every conversation about rookie galactics begins. The guy costs this much. I, I can get this many I people. Get this many people. And I can charge this I much on the door. I will make my money. Tell him to send us the contract. Um, no. Tell, I me, think, tell me some, some things you found to be true around ticketing and ticket I think, pricing. I think I found with ticketing, the fans want value. Yeah. So just, just completely take out your whole thing about how much money you're going to make because the guy is charging you eighteen thousand dollars or whatever it is. Just take that out. Yeah. Um, I found it's all about value. Mm -hmm. People are paying you an X amount of money and they expect an X amount of value. And you know, I've I've seen people commenting on Twitter being like, um, you know, if 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 events in Kenya had great production, I'd be willing to pay the ticket. You know, so it's. You have to think about what the person is getting. How, how, how is everything going to be? Who are the vendors? What's the experience going to be like? What's the security going to be like? Because those are all the things that are factored into the ticket. Yeah. So I think the ticket isn't just an issue about like the artist that's coming. It's about the experience that the promoter is providing. Yeah. And I think that the ticket price should reflect that experience. Yeah. Because I think that uh, consumers are keen on paying for a good experience. Yeah. Or by anything else. Yeah. So actually, that's how I started approaching it nowadays. Yeah. Is this ticket price that I'm, I'm charging, am I offering a compensatory like, experience? Whether I have booked this guy or that guy, yeah. is it worth it? And also, what standard am I setting for my event? Got you. So that even if I'm asking you to pay a slightly higher price than other promoters, I believe that I'm offering you a much better experience than they are. And so the ticket price is worth it. Gotcha. But I think people only understand that once they've experienced the event yeah. and they know like what this kind of promoter brings to the table. So cool. Mm. Um, for me, I think one, some of the things that I know to be true about a ticket mm. is um, a ticket is a function of multiple things. Mm. The first being mm. a function of your expenses. Mm. So you, this thing about... <laughs> Your yeah. budget. There's yeah. no way to go around it. Yeah. Which is why you do a budget, and yes. when you're making your budget, you yeah. don't you don't you don't guesstimate. No. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you have a guesstimate. Yeah. And then you go out and you get quotations. Oh yeah. <laughs> so that Definitely. the quotations tell you. Yeah. Oh, okay. This is this is what the the, the service provider is actually asking for. Yes. Then you have another line that says, okay, yeah. this is what we're going to negotiate it to. Yeah. And your final line, which says, this is actually what we locked it at. I was right? just about so you have to like get to four that. Four different columns. Yeah. They always have that <laughs> that final cost. Yes. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I for, for us, it's just like it's not a cost if there's no um, uh, quotation that's coming with that. Of course. Um, and then your final cost is really um, based on invoices. Yeah. This is the point at which you have now locked your budget. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And um, so for us, before even you, uh, I think for me, what I would say as good practice to mm. any you know event producer mm. is don't be in a hurry to have a, a ticket price. Yeah. Uh, be be meticulous mm. in building the right costing. Yeah. Think about this thing as though um, you are going to build your house mm. where, you, where you are building a house, mm. right? Because that's something that's very concrete in many people's minds, right? Like yeah. you know that it's stones and cement and yes. glass and metal. Mm. So you know that this thing is going to cost you. Yeah. So already in your head, mm. it adjusts your thinking from, oh, but I know a pal to mm. being like, but actually literally, mm. How many bags of cement do I need yes. that my pal is going to sell for me for how much? much. Yeah. Give me the quotation. Let mm. me get three different quotations to make sure that I'm getting the best price. Yeah. You know. And also, can I see what I'm getting before exactly. I pay for it? So then I think that there's a function of the actual expense yeah. of the um, of the event. Mm. I think then there's a function of what is a reasonable return that mm. you would like to make yes. against yeah. the, the 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 event. Mm. And then there's a question of what can the market, the audience, your mm. who, what yeah. can they afford? Yes. Relatively. Yeah. And that's not an exact science. Mm-mm. So there you need a lot of social science to sort mm. of figure out where do they spend. Yeah. In your in your who category, mm. I think one of the things we've always factored in is mm. what else could they spend this money on? Mm. This your audience. Yeah. After you've identified your audience. Mm. And I remember in the early days of uh, Blankets and Wine, one mm. of the things that we would really actually compete with us is brunch. <laughs> ah. Which has nothing to do with yes, a music yes, experience. Yes, yes, yes. But it's a but Sunday But the relative thing. class, it's a Sunday thing. Yes, what yes. do I do on Sunday? Yeah. Right? So yeah. I'm going for brunch with my homies. Mm-hmm. At this brunch, there'll be a DJ playing music. So mm-hmm. um, if, and because I, I work within a limited monthly budget mm. and my, um, what can I say? My entertainment budget is within a certain limit. Yeah. So we found that brunch was a competition. Yes. That's fair <laughs> and actually that I think event. about it. Yes. <laughs> right? Yeah. And so we even had to think about, so how can we give you a ticket that includes your brunch? Mm-hmm. We, we tried different models. You yeah. Know, I would think through that. Mm. Um, so the, the those things inform us relatively mm. when, you ha- when you're very clear about who your audience is, yes. relatively what they can afford. So there's yes. what it actually costs. Yeah. What you would like after your cost, what you would like to make mm-hmm. as your sustainability profit, yeah, and then relatively what people can afford. Yes. I think somewhere there, mm. you I have found mm. that you make a much more empirical mm. um, decision. You have a lot more data to yes. back that decision that yes. you're making. Yes, yes. Than when we went in the direction of value. Yeah. Um, and we learned that lesson very painfully because yes. you know there is one of our brands that we totally love. Yeah. Which we think it's such high value, yeah, uh, and we price it at thinking through value, yeah. Um, but Relative it didn't reflect cost. this actual, yeah, uh, the realities of what it costs us versus what we'd like to make versus mm-hmm. what the person can pay. can pay. Yeah. So my two cents yeah. <laughs> on, yes. on tickets, yeah, is. Don't be in a hurry. That should yeah. actually that decision should that should come be your last thing toward really. the end, yeah. which is why I also think, yeah, going back to the original, a yeah. good event producer utilizes mm. time. Yes. So don't be in a hurry to plan, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Because if you say if you give yourself say a six month window yeah. to plan, mm. you can literally take the first two months mm. to literally work through this thing called budget quotations, venue. You know, thinking through those I mean, points. That's so that why I'm right a, now like, for my next year. Exactly. The time. <laughs> so that you really have like a solid number. So it's yeah. informing this decision of okay, so do I have two layers of tickets? Do I have one layer of tickets? Mm-hmm. Do I have it that you need the right data set to yeah. come to your ticket information and you won't get it mm. by just being like this guy. Yeah, this, this guy. Guys will pay. Although they pay it, but <laughs> Your point is well made, Donnie. You can't. It's nuanced. Yeah. That's what we are seeing. Yes. That it's nuanced. Yeah. Like you, because for me, you know, I, I see where you're coming at it with the idea of value. Yeah. And also, again, coming at it with the with the budget, with yeah. the actual cost. Actual, actual. Right? Lacking. 
Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And if you do your job well, yeah. in my view, yeah. is that you've spent about three solid months yeah. just building out yeah. budget, suppliers, quotations, final invoices. You really have a clear sense of money yeah. that you have yeah. and that you're gonna need, yeah. right? Um including your you know, your artists, whatever. You mm. really have a clear sense of that. Mm. And you've locked in those people mm. before you make an announcement. Yes. Right. So at the point at which you're making an announcement, mm. you move into promo. Yes. Right? Yes. Which is the next thing that I want to talk about, event marketing. Mm. I want to know how to create the right or what you what you what you have found to be true. Mm. Or some things, some insights that you can provide around. Um, I think when it comes to marketing, of marketing. course, I think look, there the, there's the basic marketing, of course, like outdoor digital sort of pushing to people, newsletters and everything. But I think the marketing that really works is when you have to find a way for your event to capture the imagination. Mm. That's really it. Mm. That's what takes an event from an okay one to a great one. Mm. Is when you're able to create marketing that captures the imagination. And I think that is a combination of your own brand, of the reach that you have already created through sort of like, you know, the basic sort of marketing types. And then again, the artist and also the time. Mm. You know, I I think when you have a legacy brand like Blankets, you know, the moment people hear there's a Blankets, you, you have already sort of built a reputation. Mm. It's a legacy. Yeah. You get what I mean? So yeah. at that point, it's like, it's all good. But what I'm more, by, more interested, interested in is the person mm. who's starting now. You've never done a gig before. If you've, if you've never done a gig before, never then done a gig I think before. Your, 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 your marketing yeah. is, I think you start with the basics. Correct. Don't try to like, because you, you really want to build on top of that. Got so, you. you know, strong digital, strong retail yeah. event marketing. Yeah. You know, you're outside of a car, you've met a friend, you tell them this yeah. thing is happening. There's a sense of it being retail. It's Indeed. like politics. Indeed. You know, like like there's a sense where it's retail. Yeah. Where you're telling people my gig is happening on yeah. this date, yeah. you know, get yeah. excited, come, this is where you can buy a ticket. So I think if you're starting at the beginning, you just have to you have to build this network. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of like retail sort of regular regular selling. Yeah. And of course there's digital. And I think digital is a great way to go. Yeah. But then also having having a marketing plan and again finding a way even if it's at the beginning yeah creating a branding and graphics and a strategy that's able to capture people's attention yeah even if you're just starting that's yeah. what you really need like yeah. i remember my first like event poster when i did a gig at the alchemist mm. the poster was the poster was i don't think i can find it now but the poster was very interesting mm. and i remember people were just jazzed by that flyer mm. You know, I just had, the way it looked. Just the way it looked. Yeah. They, had never see, they had never seen an event poster like that. Yeah. And that immediately captured, captures people's attention. Yeah. So I think trying to be as unique as possible. And unique doesn't mean like you say crazy things. But just find a way for it to stand out at the beginning. Yeah. And also, again, manage your expectations, especially if you're starting. I mean, the first event I organized had like 50 people. Mm. You know? So... But we were able to capture people's imagination through the graphics mm. and through the rollout that we had and the different ways that we marketed yeah. the event. So I think if you're starting out at the beginning, mm. then you really have to be as clever as possible and try to yeah. try to differentiate yourself from other people and do something that capture people's attention. And don't yeah. forget that. And there's, you know, the reason I can't really pinpoint one exact thing is because, you know, it, it goes from event to event, mm. really. But just because you're starting out doesn't mean that you can't do something special. Yeah. And realizing that the moment you begin marketing is the moment you begin building your brand. Yeah. You get yeah. what I mean? So even if you're just starting out and you're looking to have two, three, four hundred people, how do you make it the most exciting and interesting thing for them? Because especially here, I think different kinds of events, like if it's really different and special, even if it's small, yeah. people still are interested. Absolutely. And I think that's also a thing that, I I I, sh I would say a lot of people think mm. that it has to be big for it to be successful. No, you can actually have a, a very I, successful yeah. gig of fifty people. Yeah, because what is success? What are your success, what is success metrics? Success to you? Yeah, yes, you have exactly. To, a good event producer at yeah. the beginning. Yes, maps out what is success. Yeah, and, you know there'll be many parameters of success. Yeah, uh, staying within budget, building breaking good, even. Uh, breaking even, yeah. building good. Uh, um, 
relations, for example, with mm-hmm. vendors, mm-hmm. good experience for consumers, mm-hmm. making profit. There are so many metrics of yeah. this thing called success. And yes. you have to map those metrics before you have started yeah. so that you know where you're going. Yeah. Um, and so for me, I found what I think I found to be true because same thing. I began mm. by first doing events for me as mm. an artist mm. is that uh, in marketing your event, it, mm. you have to, the thing that you are telling people and the thing that it is yes. should be true. Yes. So when I see so it, true. yeah, like when I see this thing yeah. and when I come for this thing, this yeah. thing looks like the thing I saw. Yes. Right? Yes. And so what I see a lot now mm. uh, on digital is that mm. um, there's a lot of style jacking, right? Yes. So I saw kind of muse does like this. I've yes. seen Electra Africa kind yes. of like this. Yes. I've seen African Nouveau does kind of like yes. this. Oh, okay, I've seen whoever. Let me sort of does, combine yeah. all of them and kind of find, you know, it's the aesthetic. Yeah. You're selling an aesthetic. Yeah. And um, and I find that to be sad because number one, you as a producer of the event, you mm. deny yourself the opportunity to, come up with your to own tell thing. your own story. Yes. <laughs> because you're copying somebody. Yes. yes. And then your thing mm. and the thing mm. are not. They yeah. don't marry. So the thing that you sold me mm. in this image, yeah. when I came, yeah. I did not experience this thing. Yeah. So now there's brand dissonance. Yes, yes. Right? I mean, I'll, te- <laughs> I'll tell you, even when we've, we've tried to expand out of like events, to try to do other things, I, like I'll confess that sometimes maybe we've been, like we may have taken too much inspiration. And I found actually when we've succeeded is when we had our own vision. Absolutely. Not when we were trying to copy somebody else exactly. or trying to be influenced exactly. by somebody else, exactly. but when we had our own vision. Yeah. Because that we ended up selling our vision and at the same time executing that vision exactly. so that you come and you get what we sold exactly. you on. And then now because I've had that experience, yeah. you don't need, now next time you're not selling me. Yes. Next time you're informing me, yes, I'm already happening. willing to come. Yes. <laughs> so you don't need to market to me exactly. twice. The second time you talk to me, nice yeah. information as opposed to a pitch exactly the other thing i think for me that is true about mm. event marketing mm. is that you have to market for your audience yes right yes so um some gigs mm. are going to need to use like lots of pictures of influencers saying that they are coming yes. to sort of influence others and yes. other gigs you just need to say i mean if you're producing i don't know uh, um an orchestral uh, a concert mm. your who determines mm where you will find them. Yes. So maybe you don't need to be on digital. Yeah. Maybe you need to be physically in specific places because that is where your audience is. is yes. Right? Yes. Um, and then sometimes you need to have uh, an outdoor billboard mm-hmm. because on these specific streets yes. or in these specific locations because yes. that is where your audience is yes. likely to catch this as yes. part of the out-of-home communication. But let me tell you something about billboards. I didn't know how many people see billboards. Yeah. Hey. Billboards. Don't put a gig yeah. on a billboard unless you're ready to execute that gig. Let <laughs> me <laughs> just tell you that. Yeah. It's um yeah. But you don't also need a billboard. This is what I'm yeah, also don't. saying to an event producer. Yeah. Certain events will require that, and certain events won't require that. Yeah. Some events will just require you to like and I think even the more niche an event. Mm. The, the 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 lovelier the marketing experience because yes. you're speaking to people who genuinely desire that specific thing yeah and you can find them mm. um and also i think there's some there's some events that i mean of course you know in the good old days it used to be like club promoters literally just went and gave out flyers yeah. and then when you went to the door with that particular promoter's flyer then yeah. you got money exactly mr hamipo came with his flyer so I'm also finding that WhatsApp is also sort of turning into that. 100%. Right? Like yeah. you can you can market an entire gig on WhatsApp. 100%. 100%. No, and again, yeah. that goes back now to your audience. Yeah. Right? Audience. And audience, audience, and what kind of event that you're trying to do. Exactly. So like the way we market our club events yeah. is very different from the way we market like our outdoor events. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And not all events have to be advertised on mass media. No, 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 no. I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to put like a, like a, like so let's even think game. about like Black Coffee, yes, right? Yes. Who is a huge, huge international DJ superstar. Yeah. In a niche. Yeah. Right? Yes, in a niche market. In a niche audience. Yes. So then if you go and build a media partnership, <laughs> yeah. a mass market uh, media, yeah. yeah, sure, you're going to be in the mass media, but it'll do nothing, nothing for, for you. you yeah. Because the audience Man, I have does not really sit with the artist. learned this the hard way about <laughs> media. Wow. I have learned. There is like... <laughs> Especially with a niche. And yeah. Because with us guys, niche. this is niche. Yeah. We are niche on the electronic side. Exactly. We are niche on the alternative uh, side. Yeah. So 
we really have to balance our things. But I think, I mean, for us, for example, when we put up the billboards in the marketing, I think you also have to kind of realize at what, like, to to what degree you want, like, to make your, like, how you want your event to appear. Because even though it's niche, there's also, like, the respect you want to pay someone. Yeah. If there's such a thing. Yeah. Like, I mean, to be honest, that's why I ended up putting up all of those billboards. Because, like, this, in my niche, this is one of the biggest artists in my niche. Yeah. So I want to give it the full court press. But for your niche. But for so my niche. So I also had to be very in. targeted. I mean, yes. I wasn't putting a billboard in a place where my audience wasn't. Exactly. Right? Exactly. But then because because we had a gap in the marketing because of the lockdown, yeah. we ended up actually putting up a billboard in a place where I would not necessarily have thought. But that actually ended up being the most popular billboard because I didn't know that street was so popular with everybody. Mm. So it's it's interesting. But still, the niche... And also knowing to the scale at which you want to present your event. Yeah. Because I also feel like for you and I, where we like this this is something that we're trying to do on a regular, like it's a sustainable thing, there's also the element of building your brand. Yeah. You get what I mean? Yeah. And also seeing and also giving your 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 perception. audience your <laughs> perception. But yeah. I also I think giving your audience the ability to be like, you know, this DJ I've been telling you about, look, Yanni, his gig is on a billboard. Yeah. You guys, yeah. Black Coffee, I've been telling you about Black Coffee, I've been telling you about Jules. Yeah. And you guys, like, you know, like, it also gives, I think it also gives fans a reason to be excited. Correct. So you also have to involve them in the But please don't spend picture. money on that. No, no, me, look. That's, no, 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 that's, no, no. For me, <laughs> I'll say, look, on my don't side, spend money on, uh... I want to give my fans, I want to give, like, my news people an opportunity for them also to be, to, to, you know, like the DJs, for example. You know, in this niche audience, this are, it's not every day that they're going to be able to be out there so much. Yeah. So again, it comes down to the nuance. Yeah. Right? Everything, I mean, I think especially with a niche brand, it's all about the nuances. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you have yeah. to know when when to go a little bit out yes, of, yes, of the yes, box yes, yes, yes. and also know when to retreat. Absolutely. So I so like I told you, even like for for open air events, you know, that's really an opportunity for a wider market yeah. to reach our audience. Yeah. So we think slightly bigger with the marketing. But when it comes to inside the club, we are much more targeted and nuanced with it. So I'm going to ask just like two more questions because we have to, you know, to wrap uh, up. I feel like we and could be here for hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and I could talk about this all day. <laughs> and, you know, we're, we're, we're really just talking at the surface level. I yeah. feel like this is really important for everyone who's listening to just know. We're just trying to give you some very basic lay of the land yes. type thing. You know, yeah. it, it, it gets, it's much, much more detailed. It's much, uh, much detailed. Uh, yeah. And it goes deeper. Yes, so, definitely. I mean, um, we'll be here just talking about yeah. looking at artists, the light, just that one <laughs> just line that I tell. thing. The rider, <laughs> the, the ground transportation, exactly, yes. the visa, exactly. the this, the yeah. so many things. The experience you give to artists, the yes. way you treat professionals. Exactly. Like, um, so I, there's a lot to talk about. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about risk assessment and management, which yeah. I think is such a big part of events. Mm. Um, and there's a part that people, again, when you do your job right, the yes. audience just feels like things are just falling. It went perfectly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. But like, um, I don't know if you can share some insights or some things that you found around this thing called of risk, you know, management. risk assessment and risk management. I think what, there are two parts of risk. Exactly. There are two parts of risk. Yeah. There's a part that you can assess and manage. Yeah. And then there's just inherent risk that's involved. Okay. So, for example, there is security risk. Okay. There is fire risk. There is the risks that you can manage. And those ones you have to be prepared for. So, for me, I would say that one of the biggest risks first is security. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's really the biggest thing. Mm-hmm. But then also, like, um, like when we're producing the event, like power. That's a big thing. Yeah. So like managing for that and like, like just having a generator running the whole yeah. time. Even though it's an expense, you just green and you bear it yeah. because you don't hear it drips or I don't know what yeah. you have. Your guy, the thing is service to move. So there's some manageable risks. Yeah. And you assess those as you're going through your budget. And I would say with manageable risks, I think it's always best to prepare for the worst yeah. case scenario. So you know. for me, my perspective around risk yeah. is that each 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 budget line, each yeah. item, yeah. each component yeah. of the event mm. has risk. Yes. Right. So if you think right from the selection of artists, yeah. if you're transporting people yeah. from wherever, even if you're moving them from another town, from mm. Machakos to Nairobi, yeah. as long as the person does not live in your house, yes. there's risk. <laughs> yes, 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 <laughs> right? yes, yes. Either uh, equipment getting damaged or... Um, 
flights not taking off on time. I was just about to say that. What if your artist misses the flight? Correct. You have, how are you yeah. going to manage that? Yeah, illnesses, yeah. because it's yes. true. You can actually be sick before you travel. Or yeah. I remember when we had a, a Kenyan summer, mm. a coffee came. Yeah. She was really sick. She yeah. was ill all day. Mm. Uh, but she came, yeah. you know, and that's human risk. So I think yeah. for me, in terms, my insight, what I found to be true mm. around risk mm. is that every line has... Risk. risk yes i'll give another example same yeah. kenyan summer yeah blinky was playing a gig in namu oh. and then there was the the terrorist uh the terrorist attack near the the, the airstrip right? yeah so the lamu was closed down yeah and so um even if you could think around like mm, could we charter a flight yes you you can't because there's nowhere for the flight to land take off right yes. so yes. it's can you land in Manda? Mm. So for me, it's just like understanding. And so then it becomes like, what 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 could be an alternative? Yes. You, so I think for me, the, mm. my insight around risk is mm. every line yes. has risk. Yeah. So think and mm. don't be afraid mm. to list the risk per line. That's right. And I think that's what I meant as manageable yeah. risks. Yeah. That everything you're doing, there's a risk that it could go wrong. So that's a so risk assessment. It's a, really? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you sort of, you look at all of those things and you assess like yeah. the risk and whether you're willing to take it or not. Correct. But just to go back to yeah. just this perfect example yeah. of, uh, of, of of the terrorist attack in Lamu and yeah. you having to get Blinky yeah. to Nairobi yeah. f- f- for the show. I feel like now that's where like I think we're talking about now a good event producer being able to manage that. Yeah. I won't reveal how you went around it, but you managed it, <laughs> yes. right? And that's you being, having experience and being a good leader and knowing how to go around it. And also that just being an inherent risk and understanding that as an event producer, things are going to go wrong. Correct. Even things that, even if you have gone through every line item and you have literally written a risk assessment for Make room thing, for things that... There are things <laughs> that are going to go wrong. You like, didn't know let and me you tell didn't you. know that you did Also again know. with Blinky Randall. Yeah. Hey Blinky, man, our guy. <laughs> this guy has to go far. We've, <laughs> we've come with you from far. Yeah. When we opened the views, this, this I think was like 24th Jan 2019. It was an official launch party. Blinky was supposed to do like a great live. So that show was fantastic. But literally an hour before, there was an idea attack in town. What? Yeah. I was like, okay, now what are we going to do? Mm. And then, now that just became like on the ground risk management. Correct. Assuming now we ask ourselves, what is the likelihood of an idea attack mm. inside the club? Where would it happen? How would it happen? Mm. How do we get people out? But we didn't we didn't end up cancelling the event, but we we had to like minute by minute assess that risk and manage it. Mm. And Which be goes like, then back to your a good producer yeah. has put together the right team because you have to have a competent team yes. that actually knows what to do in yes. that situation yes, exactly. or can raise a new team to support them immediately. Exactly. Got you. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Um now uh, contracting. Yeah. Contracting, contracting, terms contracting. and conditions apply. <laughs> terms and conditions apply, definitely. We know this. Yes. We know that terms and conditions apply. Yeah. So I just want you to tell me some things that you've learned around sort of contracts and the value of contracts and terms and conditions. Okay. Um, this will go back to my Berkeley professor who said something about contracts that I always apply to this day. Is that he said that like a contract is really just as strong as the two people who signed it. Correct. Like you can go sign a million contracts. But if it's two dodgy people signing a contract, that contract is not worth the paper it's written on. Mm-hmm. So, and I think that's where now your issue of, of, of things sometimes being ad hoc is also like, um, is also coming up. I think for major, major things, have a contract. Absolutely. In fact, I would say have a contract for, for everything. For everything. That, 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 is, that, that is the recommended, so I'll say it. Yes. Have a contract for everything. But what I have found from a practical perspective it comes down to relationship management mm-hmm. because there are lots of people who have worked with their contracts and we what the terms that we agreed on verbally were managed and everything went the way it was supposed to be but we do not recommend no this and just i'm saying producers. i don't <laughs> recommend that yes but i think there's also a practical element what i think is interesting with oni is that i think as you know as we learn from you and as we also grow in our own right and as the, the industry becomes more professional, then the contracts will actually become a part and parcel of how things are happening. 
So like for us, we've been, I've been trying to work with a lawyer to create like a standard contract for a lot of these things. Yeah. So that when we get into a relationship with an artist, there's just a standard contract. And then we just have to fill in certain, certain terms and everything. Um, so I definitely recommend contracts, but I think at the same time, I also recommend having good relationships and managing those relationships and keeping them stable. Correct. Because at the end of the day, absolutely, that is really what is going to no, decide. No, hundred percent. So it's like it's both. Absolutely. Don't just sign a contract with someone and then I guess absolutely. forget about the relationship. So absolutely. To speak. But then I guess at the end of the, of the day, don't always just rely on the relationship. Absolutely. I mean, I've been guilty of both, where I have completely just relied on the relationship and maybe sometimes it's gone right and sometimes it's gone wrong. And then sometimes we've signed a contract and it's gone wrong and yeah. we'll be like, this is what it said on the contract and it still went left. It is left, what it is, yeah. Right? So balance the two. I hear you. So I would definitely recommend that as you're building your team, get all of those contracts. Yeah. And, you know, like... You know, get all those contracts, get the invoices, get the receipts, find a way to to be able to sort of prove the relationship, as it were. Yeah. But don't forget the relationship. Because Absolutely. at the end of the day, 100%. Right? Like something I always remember when it comes to contracts is that diamond dealers don't deal in contracts, they deal in word of mouth. Mm. There has to be like the trust and strength in you as the event producer mm. and just being able, like people being able to trust you. Yeah. You get yeah. what I mean? Yes, so yes, yes, yes sign yes. the contract. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, but don't, trust don't, comes from relationships. Trust comes from relationships. Yes. So How it's you sort of that so it's sort of both. Yes. I mean, there are lots of there are lots of people who we worked with where I don't think we've ever signed a contract mm. with them. And even if we've had disputes, we've sort of dealt with them, and that has just been an issue of the relationship. Mm. But of course, again, back to risk management. If it's a big guy, if if like if it's a headliner, please get it in a contract. Yeah. There's some things the way you have to get them on the contract. But at the same time, also just manage your relationships because I think at the end of the day, your word is your bond. Yeah. So yeah. I really also, think, also remember yeah. that. I think one, I think that's, you're, you're really saying the truth, the, the, the combination. Because mm. I remember that there's a gig that we did. We were very successful. Mm. A few months later with mm. the same suppliers, mm. uh, we did a gig that was very unsuccessful mm. and we owed the money for mm. a year. Mm. And the thing that saved us mm. was the relationship. Exactly. But the thing about relationships is yeah, yeah. honest, yes. timely communication. Yes. So what we found to be true as an insight mm. is any conversation that happened verbally, follow yeah. it up with an email. Mm. Further to the conversation, thank you so much That's really cool. for the conversation we had today about <laughs> yes. this, this, this. Yes. We are really grateful. Yeah. Please acknowledge receipt Jeez. of this email yeah. as just, you know, for paper trail. Mm -hmm. Most people will acknowledge that, yeah. right? Because then you have a paper trail of yes. conversation that yes. protects you. Exactly. Right? So never, if the thing was said verbally, yeah. it must be followed up by something written. It mm -hmm. must be because... Yeah, having that record. Yeah, the, the record, record. The record yeah. is almost as good as a contract yes. if you don't insist on Indeed. having something contractual. And the other thing also about the record is that yeah. then now when things go sideways, yeah. the people can remember, yeah, but you remember we talked about this thing. Yes. So it will make the conversation easier yeah. at that moment when yeah. you're asking for favor. Like, yeah. you know, a case where we're like, yo, we, we owe you and yeah, now we just need time. Yeah, we just need How time. How much time? Time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Right? Yeah. And having really very candid movie. conversations, yeah. very honest conversations, yeah. you know, being very open book about our budget. They saw it. Yeah. They're like, yeah, but you know you guys, yes, yeah. it's true. Yeah. And actually the vendors are the ones who are very invested in helping us get out of the hole. Exactly. And you can provide us things yes. to do something so that they can get out of the hole. Yeah. So I think I really do agree with you. Contracts mm. are great. Yeah. Relationships Chips. are even better. Exactly. Yeah. So, so you must do co both. Combine, combine combine the two. Combine. Yeah. yeah. Combine. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Now, um, I think uh, I'm going to finish on a really uh, thing that nobody ever likes to talk about, which mm. is tax. Okay. <laughs> please tell... Um, uh, people about tax. Please tell people that tax is compulsory. Just look in a camera and just uh, tell them tax I is don't compulsory. Do, what is that thing of uh, <laughs> pleading the fifth or something? <laughs> it's humiliating myself. Look, I think what I'll say is that get a good accountant exactly. and be aware of taxation. Exactly. Because I found that yeah. taxation is both something that you can be scared of. Yes. But also if you go and you actually read about it, you might yes. actually find that it doesn't affect you the way you thought. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So my thing looking so to the camera accounting. would say yeah. is just be aware of the rules of taxation. Correct. And see how they affect good accounting. you. Got because 
like th- there were things that I w- was worried about when it Indeed. came to tax, exactly. and then I asked my accountant, and I was like, then turns out "People it's are not telling, a thing. Yeah, yeah, it's not a thing. It's not a thing. <laughs> yeah." So you like, it's, it's. I think it's good to be knowledgeable. Yes. Then I think from there, now it's between you and the tax man. Yes. But have knowledge. Yes. So of, suppose, of what it means. Yeah, I suppose maybe that I, I fully agree with you. Yeah. And what I would add to that is yeah. when I say that it's compulsory, it's. It's compulsory, put it on your budget. Yes. But I think even more compulsory is yeah. to work with a competent yes. finance person yeah. to run That's budget. what we need in this industry. Yeah, look at the there, camera there and are many say, I need There are many professionals that you can hire. Finance expertise yes. in this industry. <laughs> Send us your CV. There are many and professionals. Yes. There's, there's <laughs> many professionals. <laughs> because you must do it. You know? yeah. Because when you have the, exactly what you're saying, when you have somebody who's giving you the right advice yes. for a period of time, yeah. you will realize that, yeah. oh, tax and you know other statutory payments, yeah. it's just part of business. It's not something that you should be losing yes. sleep over. over. Yes. And it's not something that you need a hookup. Not I need really. a guy to no, do no, no nothing. No, no. It's just part of business process. Yeah, yeah. There's the way the government thinks around tax and yes. how businesses are allowed to claim money yeah. expenses. But again, with all so this, why I'm saying need know, we need yeah. to form a lobby <laughs> so that we can go and lobby these Germans. Because I don't know that it was with you or when I did something with Go Down, but they were talking about how the Treasury also sometimes just did like these industry workshops. Because I think again, I guess it's I just. It's just about being aware about it. Like you're yes. saying, it's not it's not such a crazy deal. And it's not something to be terrified about. It's not something of. to be terrified about. Because, I mean, in the beginning, I, w- I used to be scared about this whole thing. But when I started consulting with, with my accountant friend, yeah. friend, let's call him that way, as he's not a retailer, <laughs> um, he, he was giving me advice about the different aspects of it. Exactly. And that actually made me less scared yes. about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's made it easier to tackle the issue of tax. Got you. Got you. So me, I would say to a starting out producer, yeah, as part of your core team, yeah, like right from the beginning, beginning get an accountant, get a good accountant, guy. get a solid accountant yeah. who works with a good auditor, yeah, so they can help you think about your business process right from the jump. Right. Yes. You see, those of us, who, those, those of us who did it, uh, start <laughs> off with the yeah. CFO right from the start, we are sort of kind of playing catch up and. Yeah. Trying to get to the right level. It's so, so frustrating. It is so frustrating. Yeah. It is so frustrating. Yeah. So yeah, definitely if you're just starting out, start off with the guy. Got but you. even if like you're 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 sort of in the midst of it all, you're I don't not late. I, yeah, you're not late. You're I think late. there's still an opportunity to yeah. to speak to, to speak with someone. But you know, I, I was finding this in South Africa because I was talking to some to some people there about business and everything. You know, there there are people who are like expertise in like entertainment tax yeah they know all of the different yeah. nuances of it yeah. of it of it of it yeah. so i think that's what that's what we're begging for here because if what you go we to, found what have you found we found that you will start once you start with a good trained accountant because the principles tend to be the same yeah in a short while they will start to understand your business needs mm. right and what is it that you actually do yeah and it's actually your accountant yeah. who will find the right people at carry to ask the right questions mm. And then they will bring you the right information, right? So because the specialized service does not exist, yes. you, the, you will train the specialized service Yourself, over a period of time. pretty much, yes. By your own needs, right? Yeah. Because as you're thinking through, as you're doing your monthly, you're posting your monthly uh, payments mm. um, and your whatever, your, your business process. Yeah. Your business process, will you will see the holes. Yeah. And the accountants are actually the ones who will tell you, oh, this thing, this thing, this thing. Okay, mm. let me... This is what the act is now saying. Yeah. Let's find out what this means. Yeah. Um, I just wish I, we didn't have yeah. to like train the guy <laughs> ourselves, so to speak. But it's definitely, and I'm sure they also see this themselves. It's definitely like having the expertise would definitely make a lot of things easier because we're all trying to, to do it the right way. Absolutely. But it's a mixture of ignorance and fear and misconception yes. that sort of creates like... Yeah an ecosystem because if you also go and you talk with someone who doesn't have any expertise in the field yes they can also misadvise you and i think that's even worse absolutely right so i don't know like i've just said three or four times this thing qualified as me like we want to do it right correct but it's, it's it's being able to trust someone with such a vital thing that you sort of have to work with someone who knows what they're doing gotcha. and who has experience with other people, maybe like you or other people who have you know long-term experience in the same. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. 
Thank you so much, Lee, really, for you, sharing Bonnie. some insights. Yeah. Uh, I hope you guys have found that useful if you're um, just getting into the world of events, if you're thinking about events, um, if you want to invest in events. Mm -hmm. um, by no means was this sufficient. This is no. just meant to give you a small taste of what it looks like uh, when you join Perform Music Incubator, some of the education that we do and um, how deeply we want to just make this thing work. Yeah. So thanks, guys. See you at the next episode.